the QB draft hype is ruining the QB position. Is this an overreaction or reality? Um, I'm going to start first and foremost. I, I, I think this is reality. I do. I agree. I agree. I mean, it, I, to me, I think that you continually hyping up these guys and pushing them up, saying before the season even starts, this guy is going to be a number one or number two draft pick, or before you know he's done anything in in uh, any game, this guy is going to be the greatest. And we're getting younger and younger and younger. And they're continually projecting these guys as the next best thing. How many times we've heard everything about Arch Manning? I still have yet to see Arch Manning play a college football game. And yet he's in touted as the next thing, obviously because of the name. But honestly, you look at guys like Trey Lance. You look at guys like Zach Wilson. You look at the late uh, Dwayne Haskins or, or uh, um, Daniel Jones. All these guys that get picked so high and you're just like, these guys aren't that good. And and the NFL and the media and everybody's hyping them up. It, it's ruining it because you got these guys coming in and Carson Wentz is a he's a mid-tier quarterback. But he got picked, what, first, second, like early first round? I, it, and and what happened? This should not be a surprise to us. The success that these guys had, maybe that should be a surprise. Because I watched a lot of that film. Going to Brock Purdy, I watched a lot of that film from Iowa State. Brock Purdy was a baller. Now, he had Breeze Hall there, and he had Xavier Hutchinson at wide receiver, and he had Charlie Kohler at tight end. But if you don't know, if you don't watch college football, you wouldn't know that Brock Purdy could, he's a gamer. And and he had many matchups with Oklahoma and uh, Jalen Hurts and outclassed him. So, uh, listen, I, I get it, just like uh, Steve was saying. Nothing else to talk about. Everybody wants to hype stuff. They just want to keep talking. The more it almost seems like the more you talk about it, the better these guys become. Anthony Richardson became a top five pick last year. And when he let when he was uh, at the end of the season, people are like, this guy's a third rounder. But because of all the all the things he can do with the combine and the pro day and how far he can throw, he got moved up. He didn't finish the season. Now I don't know if this is that, but listen, I, look, for me, we need to pump our brakes on these quarterbacks. I understand the quarterback is the main cog in the wheel, but at the same time, you putting all this money into this hope, this potential guy that he could be the savior of your your franchise, it's, it scares me and it's hurting these guys because you're going to get some Jamarcus Russells. No, oh, you're always going to get a you're going to get a Jamarcus Russell no matter what every once in a while. Right. The way I look at it is, it's exactly like the Moneyball situation that mm-hmm. happened in Major League Baseball, where you had these scouts that for generations were like, "Oh, he he has a fastball. He looks like a pitcher. He has a pitcher's body. He has right. a catcher's body." The blah 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 blah. And when you started, when they started getting into the analytics, they found out that none of that means anything. No, you've no. got to look at the on-base percentages. You've got to look at other things in these positions. And I think what we're having in this situation, it's not scouts in this case. I think what it is, is you're having, is you're having some people that are looking at it in a more analytical level, like mm-hmm. actually looking like when a quarterback, Kalen, when he played a team, that has a 75% win percentage or more. What are his stats? Right. Who is he winning again? What is he doing? Where are his stats? Where's all this stuff in there? And they're starting to bring that analytical information more into the into the story. Mm-hmm. And then everybody on the other side is like, absolutely not. No, no, no. He's built right. like a quarterback. He's tall. He looks good. He can hit. And it's like that. We got to stop doing that stuff, right. guys. Yep. We need to actually sit there and be an, as analytical as everybody else is and say, look, okay, fine. You want this guy for your team, but does your team play his style ball? Does your team have coaches that will work? And the other thing that nobody keeps, and this has been going on for a while, is that nobody's really thinking about how these guys 
they're going from playing the top 15% of the football players in the country at different schools to playing the top 1%. And stuff is going to change. That is 100% going to change. The problem is now is that these guys are such an investment. They are such a huge part of their budget that teams and fans don't want to wait. They don't want them sitting on the bench for three years anymore. They don't. It's all about move on. Why? And this is a byproduct also bringing in the fantasy football stuff. I, I have him in fantasy football. I want him to be making points. I picked him to be making points. It's money. So I I think I don't, it's reality. 